good. Okay, so what we're going to do today is you simulate the post bring your computer. If you didn't, oh well, it won't be as interesting probably. So I'm trying to just give you an intro, uh, introduction. If I had a TA prepare these, I would never give it kind of like a class or a Anyway, so, uh, so what I'm going to do is just try to introduce this to you um, so you begin to get functional, and then every Friday, well, not every Friday, but most Fridays we'll be doing most Fridays we'll be doing uh, math lab and thing, simulating things and we're just doing reviews for the test. You got it to go? What was the key? Did it hurt? Yeah. Man, that's loud. Who thinks I should turn down the game? The game turned up. You're not going to want it after you go on. <laughs> 11. Well, it doesn't have controls like that. But. Okay, is that good? All right. All right, so this is the idea. <coughs> Again. So you guys should have an, enough knowledge about MATLAB to be dangerous, as they say. Um, so we used it a lot in 361, I think, based on talking to you in, in 361. That was pretty much the only class you've really seen it very much. You've seen it a little bit in other courses, but just enough to get confused, I guess. Um, and so the idea of using MATLAB is that it allows us to do computational tasks that I would say are, are pretty, they can be pretty complex problems, certainly at the level of problem you'll want to do um, in the curriculum here. And it keeps us from having to learn things like this. So some of you may have taken CS courses where you might learn C++ or something like that. Um, so that's a little more work. So even though MATLAB does have some overhead and it's more difficult to probably learn than MathCAD, it's a lot more powerful. So we've used MATLAB and, you know, Rather than show you this particular slide, um, I will show you this. Okay, this should look from the not all the text there. And obviously, I've got this really big um, screen because of um, non optimal resolution. But so this is the MATLAB um, interface, right? So when you open up MATLAB, you get this. So over here you get all the files that you that you in the current working directory, and you change the directory up there like any Windows application. Uh, I, this is an, I guess it looks similar if you have a Mac. I don't I don't really know. Okay. So one of the most common problems is people get an error and then they can call me over there and they're in the wrong directory. So if you want to run a program, it's got to be in the directory you're currently in, otherwise it's not going to find it. This is the command window, right? So this is where you enter all the commands. My lab command is in running. Um, this is stores all the variables. So once you create results that will appear in this window, you can manipulate them and plot them and so on and so forth. And this is just history of past commands. Okay. And you can easily go through your past commands if you're in the right window by just scrolling with the arrow key. All right. Which you won't understand those commands because they're for something else. All right. Okay. And then this slide just has a few things that you should know. First of all, variables are case sensitive. Um, so when you create variables in MATLAB or Simulink, they're shared between the two programs. So if you do something in Simulink, I'm about to show you a bit available in MATLAB to you to manipulate. Um, don't, name, don't name variables to be the same thing as a function. That makes sense. Um, you guys know this, right? If you create a command at the command line in MATLAB and you don't put a semicolon at the end, it prints the results out. So that gets pretty annoying, especially if you write a program. Um, so you're typically going to put um, semicolons behind all the commands so you can suppress the output because you really don't want that. Okay? Um, right, and just make sure you're in the right directory. Seems to be one of the most common mistakes. All right, so Simulink, this is new. So the cool thing about Simulink is it's a block diagram oriented language that allows you to simulate and analyze dynamic systems, including control systems, um, within MATLAB. Okay. So the picture is a picture of one. Does, I'm not even sure what exactly it does, but it's cool looking. Um, and it gives you some idea what you can do in MATLAB. So the idea of MATLAB, or Simulink, I should say, is that you're going to create these block diagrams to simulate things, which we're about to do an example. And you do this by taking these little elements here from a library, dropping them into this worksheet, connecting them up in any way you want. Okay. You guys haven't started to use Aspen yet, right? 
You just heard about it. So when you use aspen, it will be something similar. You go into aspen and you can take a distillation column icon and drop it into the worksheet and then you can start entering information from the distillation column. The aspen's a lot more complex than that lab and that sort of thing. So this is the idea. And this is why it's it's nice to use simulants because when you see pictures in the notes of a book that are these block diagrams, you can simulate those things directly in, in simulant using the same kind of block diagram <coughs> representation. All right, so this just says, how do you use simulant? And like anything else, text is nice, but it's probably better to show you um, how to do it. Okay, so let's just, let's just do that. So this is one of the things you should play along if you have a computer in front of you. So here's MATLAB, and so if you want to open simulant, you would type in the command simulate. And if you get something, not an error message, it means you have simulate, and this thing will appear. Okay. So if we look at this thing, it's a bunch of different um, things that you can put in the flow sheet, or, or the worksheet that you want to create. Okay. So, and the, one of the things about using simulate, you kind of have to learn where things that you want are located. There was okay. a question over here. What's that? Was there a question over here? No. Know. Okay, everyone. Right. Sorry. <laughs> no, there's not. All right. So, the idea is that you have to learn where things are located. So they're 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 grouped together. Okay. So let's say, for example, you wanted to uh, find a transfer function. You have to find it where the transfer function is in these groups of things here. Okay. So generically, I'm not even sure what are in commonly used blocks. You, you think you would know, right? Because that would be commonly used. But most of the ones that I use are in things called continuous, which I'll probably open up. So a MATLAB allows you to simulate systems that are both continuous in time and discrete in time. Okay. We never really talk about discrete systems, but those would be systems that um, have discrete instance in time, like k equal 1, 2, 3. We don't do that in this class, or in this curriculum, as far as I know. So we're only interested in continuous ones. Then it has things that we use down here, which are ports and subsystems. Then where are, um, let's just open it up and let me, let me show you, it's easier that way. Let me just open this one up for my own edification and see what's in there. Those aren't pretty commonly used, okay. But, well, that sucks. <laughs> okay, so let's say you do something dumb like close the, um, what have I done now? I'm sorry. I'm clicking just randomly. I'm not, I'm not sure why. It'll work eventually. I'm not so sure. All right, here, now window. Somewhere it should allow me to recover my, um, my thing that I just closed. These are all MATLAB things. Where's the simulate thing? I know it's around somewhere, but I'm not finding it very efficiently. I guess I just have to start simulating it. There we go. Yay. All right. So you have these different blocks. And so if you look in the ones that are called continuous, right? So you got this, you click on continuous. You'll see there's things in there. Many of these things you don't have any idea what they are okay, at this point. But one that we, some of the things we've talked about, for example, is this, right? This is how you enter a transfer function. If you had a time delay in your problem, you could enter this. If you wanted to represent your system as a set of different linear differential equations instead of a transfer function, you can use this representation, right? This is d dx dt equal ax plus b. So this is, we'll talk more about this, but this is the time domain representation that would correspond to this. At some point, we'll be doing control pretty soon. You can drop a controller in there and do feedback control and all these kind of things, okay? So you have to kind of learn where the things are that you want. And so if we look at um, this guy, commonly used, let's see if these things are as commonly used as they, well I use a constant a lot, as you'll see in the state. Um, where are other things that I would like to use a lot? <coughs> Sorry. 
Well, and the other thing that you might face is that depending on what version of MATLAB you have, you might, it might look, this might all look a little bit different to you. I'm not, not totally sure what version you have. For it. See, the key is being able to find what you want, right? So far, I'm not doing very well. Is there other stuff down here I'm not seeing? Oh, there's stuff down here I'm not seeing. Uh, so it's also got these things called sources and sync. Sources means um, these create signals, if you will. So, so for example, when we do dynamic simulation, you want to have inputs to the system. So that this creates different types of inputs. I'm not sure why you want a chirp input, but you can create a constant input. Um, you can write from the workspace. So these are things that you can create um, inputs for, and then these sinks are things that are outputs. Okay. So the one I normally use is this one here. Write, write the information to uh, the workspace. You can actually write it to this thing called scope, and then it gives you a real-time plot of how things work. But because it's so fast, usually that's not so, so useful. Okay? All right, so that's the idea. You're take the, find the, the various things that you need, which I'll explain, and drop them into the things, um, into a worksheet, connect them up, and use them. Okay, we're going to do an example today so you can see how it's done. All right, um, so that's all this basically says. Find, find these things, grab them, drop them into your workspace, and then work. All right, so once you have a workspace created, or a model created, I told you last time these models are called MDL files, that means MATLAB file. So here's a simulation that was built that, wow, that's really accurate. Um, impressive. So we have a bioreactor here, and what we're interested in doing in this particular simulation is simulating what the response of the bioreactor will be to a change in the dilution rate. Remember, that's the inverse of the resonance time. It's to a wild number of significant digits. Um, and then, so we, have, so we create this thing, which is a constant, drop this in, enter the number that we want, and then call, give it a name, just for clarity. Um, next time, I'll show you how to create this. At this point, we're just going to call this a transfer function, but you can also simulate, uh, simulate nonlinear differential equations, but to do that, you have to create something called an S function. I'll show you how to do that next Friday. And then you can write whatever variable you're interested in to the workspace so that you can later plot it. So in this particular case, there's no need to create time here. I don't know why this is here. It already creates that vector. We're trying to do is simulate what the output of the system is. So this might be, I'd have to look at this particular simulation, but it might be the biomass concentration um, as a function of the dilution rate. Okay? And then, oh, so actually, um, this is one that will be like your first homework assignment, I think. It's got two cell populations. They grow at different rates, and then the output is actually the ratio of these two. But that's not a critical thing. Okay? So what we'll, this is how you go about doing this. Um, and then when you want to run the simulation, you can do it here. So this is, uh, well, we'll come back to this. Okay. So here's the things you're going to commonly want to use under sources. Okay. You can use a constant, which just means the input is a constant in the system. You can do a step where it goes from one value to another value, like we talked about last time. Uh, you don't really need to use clock, to be honest. Uh, honest. Sinks, the main thing that you're really going to want to use is for the workspace. So you do a simulation, you write the variable to the workspace, and then it's available in MATLAB to plot and analyze and do whatever, anything you want. Okay. Uh, when we start doing control, we'll use this thing a lot. So what this thing does is take two signals and adds them together and creates a new signal. And you can take this one minus this one and subtract some. Okay. So that would be very useful for when you do feedback control. Because the input to the controller is usually the measurement minus the set point. Okay. So you have to create the error signal. So that's what we'll use after that. Um, and then, like I said, I'll teach you how to use this S function to do nonlinear differential equations. So those are some that you commonly use. Not included in there is the transfer function there. Uh, so, in MATLAB, it has its own help utility, and I've got some people looking in the room, I'm not sure if they look dangerous, though, so I'm keeping an eye on them. 
Okay, they're going away now. Um, so, there's a tremendous amount of help in MATLAB. Usually if I want help in MATLAB, I just simply Google it, and the first hits will be the MathWorks. MathWorks is the company that creates MATLAB. They're, they're in the Boston area. I forget exactly where. Cambridge, maybe? Maybe not. Um, and you can get enormous amounts of help on the, on the web, or if there's online help within MATLAB, um, here's a couple of links to Math, the MathWorks website that gives you help. So there's no shortage of help if you're trying to figure out how to do something. Okay? Um, and the textbook has a little appendix in it, but it's pretty, pretty rudimentary. So most things that we'll do in fact, I think most everything you need to do I'll cover in class, but if you forget how to do it or get confused, you can always find help um, online with that in your problem. Okay. All right. So this is an example I already did. So let, let me open this one up. So you remember this was the mixing tank example? So what I was doing was mixing two streams in a mixing tank and then plotting the output here. And so we went through the process of driving the model for that. This is always risky. Let me see if I can pull it off. I don't want to. <coughs> yeah, it's always risky. I'm trying to remember where I got this example. Mixing tank example. One more try. Sorry. Let's try under this one. Yay, I think. Let's not celebrate too early. All right. So this is the this is the example that I think. Let me look at the transfer function that I ended up getting. Two or four S plus one. So I think this is the one. So this is where you take a stream, you mix it up in this tank, and you have a stream coming out. It's a, it's a stirred tank system. This was the balance equation, right? We know that steady state, the two compositions will equal each other, but they might not be equal um, transiently. So we went through this specified an input change, which was a step change in the input concentration, took Laplace transform, found transfer function, and we found for this particular system, this was the transfer function. Okay. This relates the inlet concentration to the outlet concentration. Okay. So let's say at this point, rather than specifying the input and taking the inverse Laplace transform, you can just simulate this directly in, in uh, simulate. And Supposedly, that's what I did. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So this is the same example. So I'll show you how I did this in a moment. But the idea here is that I dropped in a block for the input, which was a step change. I created a transfer function that represented the dynamics of the mixing tank. And then I wrote both the input, which was the, remember, this is the inlet concentration, and this is the outlet concentration. I gave them a name and I wrote them both to the workspace so that when after I ran the simulation I could plot them. Okay. And so if we go back here and look over here, we'll see we're in the wrong directory. So there should be something I think called mixing.mdl. I've already created it. Well you'll create your own in a moment. There it is. Same thing. So what did I do? I drop these in and then entered information here. So this step thing, if you click, so once you drop this thing in, you click on it, it brings up a window where you can enter information. So for the step, it enters what time do you want the step to take place, what was the value before the step change, and what is the value after the step change. You don't need to worry about this. Okay? So this says, please implement a step change from 0 to 5 and do it at time equals 0. You can change any of those if you like. Then you enter, I dropped in a transfer function here, and it says enter the transfer function. So you do this in terms of polynomials. Okay, so it wants each of these to have the coefficients of the polynomial of the numerator. So the numerator was just 2, right? And the denominator was 4s plus 2. Okay. 
So this this represents what multiplies s. This represents what multiplies s to the zero. Okay. And so you can enter any arbitrarily complex transfer function you want, which is nice because for this one it's really easy to take the inverse Laplace transform. But if you had a really nasty looking transfer function where this was fifth order and this was third order or something, you'd never be able to take the inverse Laplace well, not never. It would be very, very difficult for you to do it analytically. But you can do it in MATLAB very easily. Okay? So if we look at MATLAB now, you'll see there's nothing in the workspace. If I take this thing and I run it. So up here are the uh, that's the time you want to run for. So in other words, it's going to run for 15 time units, whatever time units. In this case, probably minutes. I just made up the parameter, so I don't know. If you run the simulation too long, you'll have a lot of data. I mean, typically, you're going to get responses that look like this, right? Here's the output. Here's time. It'll, it'll look something like this, let's say. Okay? If you run the simulation, let's say, too short, you might stop it there, and then you miss where it ends up going. So then you need to run it longer. If you run it too long, you know, you've got a lot of data. It's pretty, I mean, this is not very exciting, right? From here to here, just pretty much constant. So typically, you pick this number in relation to the time counts in the system. But if it's, if it's too short, it's going to look like this. And if it's too long, it's going to look like that. Okay? So I know for this one, 15 is OK. Um, you can change a lot of things here where it says configuration parameters. I never change anything, to be honest. Let me see if I can grab it. Oops. Not sure what I've done now. That is not what I wanted. Okay, you see there's an enormous amount of stuff you can change in here, right? So for example, you could change the solver. Okay. You see the solver over there? I'm sorry, this window is so big and unruly. Over here are, is the solver. See, remember all the solvers we did in MATLAB? Like, they were OD13, OD45. Like, you can change this to be any solver you want. These are the same solvers that are available in MATLAB. Okay? So the default is 4 or 5. That's a wrong to cut a method. So the way this normally works is you don't do anything in here unless you identify a problem. Like, it's really slow, it fails, then you might want to look in here. But typically, you can just go with the defaults. It works fine. So if you click this, it gives you a little bing, meaning it's done. It's created this, these vectors. And now you can plot, well, I'm lazy. I'm trying to find the old command. You can plot. It'll create T out for you. Okay, And then you might pr plot the outlet, for example. Okay, And so what this says is the outlet concentration starts at 0 because it's a deviation variable, then goes up to the new steady state, which is 5 which is the same as the inlet concentration. Okay. So, I mean, you can also plot the input on the same, same thing. If you do, you get the picture I showed you here. Um, so if we look at this, oh, sorry. So we look at this plot here. What did I do? I just did what I just did. <laughs> Plotted the output versus time. And then I also held the plot, plotted the inverse input versus time. Okay. And then I labeled the axes. You guys have done this. I created a legend. You should know how to do this from last time. If not, you can see how to do it in that line. Okay. So this is the kind of thing you can do in, in lieu of like taking the inverse Laplace transform. So now it would be best, hopefully, if we do, if we actually do our own example. Okay, so here's your challenge. The question? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I never, no. never looked for questions. I assume there won't be any. So there's two. So um, you can go first. How, how did you get to that solver window that you had open earlier? Um, so at this thing, I went to simulation configuration parameters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you had a question? What type of blocks would the component outlet? Uh, the inlet, so the question was, I'm supposed to repeat the question that I was told. <laughs> the question was, where do you find those blocks that represent the input and outputs of the system? Um, like these, these things here, right? Okay, so those are found, let's see if I can, over here, under, got to come down here, sinks, right? 
and there was this thing right here to the workspace. Okay. All right. So here's your job. You've got 22 minutes to accomplish this. Okay. You are to create, uh, simulate simulation that here's your transfer function. Here's your input, it's a step change of magnitude one. And you basically want to simulate what happens, what's the response of that system to this input. Okay. And then, assuming you can successfully accomplish that, if you have trouble, I can walk around and help you. So we can vote. You, you, you think you'd, you'd have enough ammunition to do it yourself, or I could just do it and you could follow along, but it's not, it's not that. It's not that challenging. You should be able to do it. You can. You only need ten minutes. Is that what you said? <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll, I'll help you if you have trouble. But you're just going to do exactly what I said. So what are you going to do? You're going to create something that looks. I'll come back to the slides. So don't panic. You're going to create something that looks exactly like this. Okay. You're going to put in a transfer function. It's not. It's not going to be this transfer function. It's going to be the one I gave you. So you're going to have to. Find a block that block for transfer function under continuous. Drop it in here, right? So maybe I'll at least get you started since you haven't done this. Okay. So this is how quick it is. You come up here. You don't go there. You come here. You say new. Okay. New model. It creates this window for you. Okay. So in this window as well, you'll enter this stuff. So what do you need? First thing I always do is drop everything in there and worry about connecting it up later. So I'm going to take my library, wherever that went. Do I still have a library? Did I close that thing again? Okay. All right. It's going to be hard for me because I don't have much room to work. So there's my thing. And here's this thing. All right. So first thing I need is a transfer function. So I'm going to come under continuous, and I'm going to find something called transfer function. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to hold down, at least in Windows, I'm going to hold down the left key, and I'm going to drag it over there and drop it in there. All right, so there it is. So that's good. I got that. Now I need an input. So under input, I'm going to go under sources. I want to do a step input, which is somewhere. Step. There it is. So again, I'm going to click on it, grab it, drop it over there, and there it is. Okay. And then to um, write the stuff to the workspace, I have to have these things. And I actually need two of them. So I'm going to drop in one so I can record the input signal. And then I'm going to drop in another so that it records the output signal. It gives them different names. Okay? All right. So then you kind of align this stuff so it's going to look cool. Right? Look kind of nice, like maybe like this. And then the only thing I'm going to do to help you now is I'm going to show you how to connect them together. Okay? So that looks kind of good. You can see it wants to be connected. You see that? Dying to get connected together. All right, so you just, I should have, don't do that. Okay. So what do you have to do? You have to come over here to this thing. You have to hold down the left button, keep it held down, then pull this over until you see it's connected over to this one. Okay, and then you let go. Same thing here. Pull it over. Once it's there, connect it. And then I want to record this signal. I think I can do it this way. So that's simple. Okay. So you got to do something like that. So you do that, and then it's up to you. You enter the information into these blocks. And I should tell you one thing here: that if you come, if you look at this thing, it always wants to save it as a structure, which we really don't like because I've really taught you how to use structure. So you always going to want to change these two things to array. You have to do this last. So let's do it. Okay. All right. So now your job. I'm doing no more. Is to do the same thing. Find these blocks, drop them in there, connect them up, and then you have to enter the information, right? You have to enter this to be a unit step change. You have to put the right transfer function into this thing. Then you should be able to simulate it. You can pick what time you want to simulate it up there. 
and then you can plot the response. And if you have some time, you can change the values of these um, parameters in this thing. Okay. So I go back to the slide so you can see the transfer function, or at least so I can see it. This is the wrong. Okay, so this is the problem you're trying to solve, right? So the process here, the GMS, is something more complex than something you wouldn't enjoy taking the inverse Laplace transform of. I think, right? And then the input is just this. Step change magnitude one. Okay. All right. So that's all you need from that slide. If you get this done and plot it, it should end up looking something a little bit like this. It's kind of weird looking. I'll explain it at the end of class. This is why it looks like that. Um, if you have extra time, you can play around with these parameters. Like you can make that a plus sign. You can put a four here. You can do all kinds of things. Okay. So back to simulate. <coughs> Maybe I should be nice to you guys, since I already did that, and it's really hard to work when things are this huge. Okay, so I already have this thing, I thought I had this thing, uh, I'm sure I have it, I wonder what I called it. Does the slide give it a name? I'm clicking randomly upon slides. I, I don't know if I have this one actually created. It's trivial to create them. I just showed you. So, okay. So you want to make something that looks like that. Right? Get these blocks. Drop them in there. Connect them together. Make this a step change of magnitude 1 that occurs at time equals 0. Change. This is the default. It gives, gives you this. Okay. Change that transfer function to be this transfer function. So that means the coefficients of the numerator, you'll enter like this, 1 and minus 1, and the coefficients of the denominator, you'll enter as this, 1 s squared, 1 s plus 1. Okay? So if you have any problems, you can let me know. But for now, I'll just let you work on it again. That's a warning. <laughs> so sometimes you'll run Simulink and it'll appear not to work because it'll give you some long-winded warning. It'll say, oh, the step size or the tolerance or something like this. Those warnings usually don't matter. Okay? If you get something called an error, then it's a problem. If it just gives you some warning, you should be okay. So if you, if you look now, you should work, right? You should be able to look at the work space. So, see, there should be something under here. 